All right, folks, so what we have here is a GPS USB dongle made by Ublox. Now, the reason I bought this is I wanted to be able to have a real-time clock on my Raspberry Pi 4 when I'm not connected to a wired or wireless network, and uh, this device will fit the bill for that. Additionally, there may be a point where I need access to positional or location information. But uh, that's not my initial concern. There's not much to this USB dongle. There is an LED light on the side uh, that will blink once when powered on, and it will blink many times uh, once it acquires a signal with, uh, with the satellite. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that this GPS does need to download what is called an almanac when it's initially plugged in, and that can take some time. So here we are at the desktop of my Raspberry Pi, and uh, what we're going to do is open up some notes that uh, I put together for doing this installation. Now there's a couple tutorials on the internet and I kind of pulled this together from a couple of different uh, sources. But at the end of the day, this guy Mike Richards, G4WNC, uh, has done a fantastic job putting together uh, a website that has a tutorial on it. So that's where the bulk of my information comes from. And then also uh, other folks on YouTube have produced videos uh, with a similar goal or objective. What we're going to do is pull um, from this notes file, which will be posted uh, below, and then we're going to cut and paste that into a command prompt. Uh, and you would just open up your terminal window in order to do that. So one of the first things that we want to do is we want to update our repositories. And this is kind of like syncing uh, the App Store, for lack of a better word, uh, to your Raspberry Pi to make sure that you have all the latest versions of your software and packages on your Raspberry Pi. Just takes a few minutes to run and we'll speed this up. Once you update your repository information, the next thing you want to do is you want to upgrade any installed packages or applications. So let's go ahead and copy the command for that, sudo apt-git upgrade. And we're going to paste that in and then uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to run that. Now, uh, unfortunately, I got this message, this error message, um, and it's not atypical to get uh, messages when you're doing an update and upgrade. And basically what this is saying is, is that my installation is not in sync with all of the repositories, um, more or less. And so we're just going to move on. This happens sometimes. You go back in a couple days, do your uh, apt-get update and your apt-get upgrade, um, and it usually will correct itself in time. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. So we have the GPS plugged in, and I want to use this command, lsusb, which will list my USB devices. And I want to see if the Raspberry Pi has detected that the GSP is plugged in. GPS, I mean. And here you go. You can see that uh, Ublox AG is in that list, as well as everything else that is plugged in to my Raspberry Pi. And I want to make a note that I do have an ICOM 703 ham radio connected to this. To this, um, And we'll talk a little bit about potential conflicts there. So the next thing I want to do is install the GPS software. So I'm going to copy this command, which does just that. And again, this command will be in the notes below. And for this one, we used a program called apt, not apt-get. Um, I don't know if I typed that in that way. Uh, both are installation packages, or if I cut and paste it uh, from a different tutorial. The next thing we need to do is we need to edit the GPS server software's configuration file. And we do that by issuing this command, sudo nano, and then the location of the file. Nano is a command line text editor that uh, we are going to use. And I need to check these settings and then make sure they match the ones in the notes. So I'm going to have to add some information around the device, and I'm going to have to add some information around my GS um, GPSD options. Now one of the things is, is that there is a setting here that says USB auto equals true. When I had it set that way, I was getting a conflict with my ham radio that I mentioned earlier while having the GPS on. So what I did is I changed that to false and I'll show you how I did that at the end of this video and that corrected my error. 
All right, once we make these changes, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna save this file and we're going to uh, exit. So you do Control X to exit and then uh, it will ask if you want to write the file to buffer and we will answer yes, which will save the changes. And there we go, and on to the next step. Now we're going to install an application called Crony. And what Crony does, it is a time synchronization tool that will allow you to easily manage the synchronization of time between a real-time clock, um, network time servers that you may be getting time from, and then the operating system's internal clock. So sudo dash app dash, I'm sorry, sudo apt dash git install Crony will install this application. Okay, after we have installed Crony, it is best to reboot and restart your Raspberry Pi. So that's what we've done now, and that will allow your services to come up clean. Those services being Crony and the GPSD um, GPS server. So now we're going to go back to our notes file, and we are going to use some commands that will allow us to check and see if GPSD and Crony are running. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to execute those. Uh, again, they'll be down below. It's systemctl is active space service name, and uh, it tells us that it's active. So let's do the same and check for crony. And it's active. Next, I have two commands that check your GPS output. Uh, the first one did not work for me, and I did not attempt to troubleshoot it, but the second one did, and it certainly gave me a lot of GPS output. Um, so I know that it's working, but I'm not going to show that here because I don't want to broadcast all my location information. There's another command that you can issue called sudo cronyc sources-v, and that will be included in the file below. And when you run this, it will come back and it will tell you your time servers. Uh, the first one is NMEA, which is the GPS device itself. So this way we know that the GPS is working as a usable time source by Crony. Now like what we did with GPSD, we need to edit our Crony configuration file. So again, we're going to use the nano uh, text editor to accomplish this. So we're going to cut and paste our command into our terminal window and this will open our config file in nano. Now what we want to do is at the end of this uh, document we need to add a configuration line. Uh, the main thing for this I believe is a sequencing and uh, a formatting request for the crony application. So here we just copy and then we paste that into our document and once that's done we'll save this like we did last time with control X and then answering Y when it asks if we want to save the save the file. Now we're going to take a look at a command that will allow us to take a look at the output from Crony um, as well as our system time. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to paste sudo Crony C tracking and then you can take a look at your real-time clock, you can take a look at your system time uh, and you can see any deltas that uh, may or may not exist. And uh, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to use another command, um, sudo crony c space make step. And what that will allow us to do is uh, a force of synchronization so there is no time drift. And the, the reason we're doing this is um, I like to use uh, ham radios. Obviously, if you look at my channel, you'll see that for digital modes and I want to be able to make sure that my time on my Raspberry Pi is correct and uh, that's why um, we're, we're doing all this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into uh, another video where I had to uh, correct a problem because when I would try to uh, use FT8 what would happen is I would get an error message saying that uh, my Raspberry Pi could not open the port to my 7300 and uh, what I found was is that in the configuration file um, for GPSD, I had to make an adjustment. And you can see that uh, edit or adjustment here. I changed USB auto from true to false. Once I did that, I was able to fire up FT8 and everything worked just fine while the GPS was plugged into my Raspberry Pi. 
And that's it, folks. So what I'd like to do is say thank you to everybody for watching. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Um, go ahead and click the thumbs up or even subscribe. Thanks. I appreciate it.